thank you so much for watching. I thought I would show you everything from my Chanel collection because there are some things that I've bought that I love and I wear to bits and there are other things that I've bought before and they've ended up being like kind of failures. So I thought I'd share those with you. I also have got one new thing that I bought in the Chanel Christmas sale, which ended up costing me 15 pounds. <laughs> I'm gonna share that with you and then Finally, oh yeah, I'm going to talk about the Chanel um, customer shopping experience because I had one of you the other day asking me about that and comparing it to Dior. So the sh I'm going to start with bags and I've got them everywhere. If I don't use something, it goes, I sell it. If I'm still using it, then obviously I keep it. So if you've been watching me a while that you may be thinking, where did that Chanel bag go? Where did this one go? If it's not here, it's because I sold it. But this is the first. This I saw in, I think it was February 2, 2017. Um, I was working near Harrods at the time. Well, I had a meeting near Harrods on this particular day. I vividly remember it, it was like a freezing cold winter day. And when I bought this, my pet, my bunny rabbit had recently died. And I know it, sound, I know it might sound silly, but if you've got pets, then I think you'll understand it. My rabbits live in the house like cats they're not um in a hutch at the end of the garden so they're very much part of the family and we had this one rabbit who just she got cancer and it was all really really quick and horrible and i was just like a, a i was really messed up at the time actually just like really really grieving and feeling awful and feeling like i couldn't really talk to a lot of people about it because it's like it's just a rabbit go and buy another one but they you know if it was a dog I think people would feel differently. Anyway, I remember walking through Harrods on the way back from this meeting and I was just kind of like in a, like a dark space. And as I walked through, I went past Chanel and I wasn't there to shop and I saw this particular bag. And this is one of my favorite colors, this kind of like mauvey color. And in a sea of winter maroons, navy blues was this. And I couldn't believe that this was actually part of that winter collection. So that's, the story behind it. A lot of my bags actually. A lot of the ones that I buy, they, they do have sentimental stories. This comes with a non-removable chain, which is it's really, this is a, um, if I back up a bit here, this is really a uh, shoulder bag. Can you see that crossbody, it kind of sits at a bit of an awkward drop length, but you can wear it on your shoulder, on the crook of your arm, or as, as a top handle. On the inside, it's really quite, basic and quite simple it's got the double c is that focusing it's got the double c's there and then it's got a maroon red interior with an inner zip pocket this at the time i remember this was 2700 i think i remember thinking for the size of it and the fact that for net for chanel it's under 3000 was really good anyway i bought it i love it um and it's really pretty bag the next is my most recent purchase, which I think I got this back in December. This is from the Cruise Collection 2019. I think if you like the look of this, I think you should still be able to get it. This really drew my eye because I really like the classic flap. I've got a jumbo size, which I'll come on to, and I like the look of it, but the traditional classic flap has got an inner flap inside of it, which makes it really annoying. So you open this and then there's another one to open. This doesn't have it, it's one simple open space. I'm using it at the moment, so it's got my phone in it. Uh, one simple open space, kind of lined with blue. Then on the back, it's got a pocket that has got like a snap closure. Chain handle on the top. The chain handle, I think this is plastic, but it feels like metal and I don't know how they've managed to do that. It feels, um, you know when you touch a metal chain it feels cold like quite cold that's how this feels it doesn't feel plasticky at all the gold has not rubbed off this is in really good like it's just been good condition it's been pretty hard wearing so far and i like that with the main chain handle you can't remove this by the way but this is this has been designed as a crossbody and that's mainly how i wear bags i i go out holding them and then after a while i'm like no i want free hands Speaking of the classic flap, I have two. I've got one which is, this is the jumbo. It, well, it's the size large, but it kind of gets called the jumbo. And then I also have this. 
This the handle didn't come with it. I made this and put this on. But this is from the Spring Summer Collection back in 2019. It's matte pale pink caviar leather in the chevron. And you're gonna see what I mean, actually. I'm gonna demonstrate to you the double flap if you're not familiar. So you open it and then you've got this second one. And particularly when the bags are new, like it's really hard to keep that. Can you see when you try and keep that open, the whole bag lifts with it. So when you're trying to, what's in here? Oh, the authenticity card. Yeah, when you're trying to get in and out of it, in, until it softens up a bit, I find those get quite annoying but I still like the look of them. I still like the look of these when you wear them. They're just very classic looking. This I think is the size small. And then as I say, this is the uh, larger size. This has got the champagne gold hardware. This has got the silver hardware. Unfortunately, I think this is probably one of my least used bags. So as you can see there, it's got the Chanel stitched in. Then on the inside, it's got, they all look the same as this on the inside, like the lipstick holder compartment. Then you've got a zip section here, which doesn't fit a lot. That zip section is literally like this big. You would think it's like that, but it's not. And then on the back, it's got a rear pocket. But the reason why I don't use it so much is it's so big. And also, if I show you, when you wear it on your shoulder, it sits quite low down. But also, when you wear it crossbody, like they've made the chain, they've made the chain really long. So when you wear it crossbody, it's down here. And I'm quite tall. So I think if you were petite, that would be even further down your leg kind of thing. And I just find it, when I wear it, I don't find it um, a good bag to wear. I find it quite annoying, actually. I need to hurry up because there's a lot here. Coco top handle. This is the top handle. This is in the mini size. I think you can get in three sizes, large, medium, and then this is the mini size. Comes with a chain detachable handle. This is in kind of like a lemony canary yellow. Oh, I'm gonna put that back in, but whatever. Inside, you've got one larger section here, one narrow section at the back. This um, is deceptive. It fits a lot. I can get both of my phones in it. So I have an iPhone 10 and a Samsung Note 9. The Samsung's a big phone and that fits in there perfectly. What is this? The tr Trendy, Trendy CC. This is in the Chevron lambskin in the beige -y kind of color. This particular shade of beige is kind of quite coffee, I find, if I was to describe it, because I think on the camera it tends to make it look lighter than what it is. This is one of my most used bags. I use this, I use this all through last summer, I think. It's got three compartments. This section in the middle holds a bottle of water. So if you put it down, because can you see the bag? It's slightly wider at the bottom than it is at the top. You can fit a whole bottle of, bottle of water in here. It doesn't distort the bag at all. Fits a whole load of stuff. Most of the time my bag isn't even that full because I don't carry that much around. And as with the others, it's got the CCs on the top there. You can see on the inside. It's pretty spacious. The chain handle, you cannot remove. And a bit like with the other bags that I've shown you, it sits quite nicely when you wear it on your shoulder. Can you wear this crossbody? I'm trying to remember. I think you can. Yeah. Two Chanel boy bags. This is my oldest one. I've spoken about this quite a lot of times. This I bought in 2014. This, when I bought it, the sizings have all changed since I bought this. When I bought this, I think this was considered the size large, and now I think it would be the medium or something. Um, it's got the aged gold hardware on it. This, um, this is probably one of my worst Chanel bag purchases, and I, I have two Chanel boy bags, and I don't think I'd buy another one, uh, because, can you see, oh, I've said it so many times, I'm sorry, they get a saggy bottom, in them so it kind of like it gets all pinched in there so initially when you get these I'm going to show you one that's new that I deliberately haven't worn that much can you see even that looks a bit pinched in but can you see how the structure is still there then if I compare it to this it's kind of sandwiched a lot more it's lost its um, shape and this is something that I believe you can't really help happening because when you wear the boy bag and it sits under your arm, your arm 
you kind of got, unless you're like this, your arm, your elbow kind of naturally, well, you do that with bags, don't you? And then you end up squishing that bit in. But also when you use the bag and you're taking things in and out, you naturally, can you see, you naturally end up doing that. I mean, at the beginning, I was trying not to, but let's be honest, after a couple of years, you you know. I'm briefly gonna talk about this. This is in the, I think this is the size small. Um, Look at it close up though. This is amazing. This is in like a, um, a kind of champagne iridescent, and it's in, it's like a caviar type leather with aged silver hardware. And on the inside, it's exact. Did I show you the inside of the other one? No, I didn't. The inside of the boy bags, they're just one open section with, it's not even a zip pocket, it's just like an open pocket there that you could put a card in or something. With this bag, does anyone remember? I can't remember the name of it, but does anyone recall the, there was a winter collection a couple of years ago and it was space themed? And it was like you could get brooches with like Saturn on it and the planets. Um, this was from that and you could get this in a really bright silver, kind of matte silver or this colour. And I said to myself at the time, I'm never going to buy a boy bag, but I kind of, I think I bought this for investment really is one of the reasons why I bought it. Then the final bag, and I'm going to move on to shoes, really quickly jewellery, then the new thing that I bought for £15. This is my final bag. I love this. It's so squishy. This is my only tweed bag. And I have lots of you asking me about this saying that you want to buy a tweed Chanel bag, but does it pull, what do you do when you want to wash it, all of that kind of thing. Um, this is from, I think, the 2018 Spring Summer Collection. I really ended up going off on a tangent on this bag, and I forgot to tell you about how it wears and about cleaning it. So this is kind of unhelpful, but I don't know how you clean it. There are no cleaning instructions included on it at all. And this is a bag that I use quite sparingly and I tend to use it in the summer. So I haven't actually got to the point with mine where it has got dirty at all. And when I do wear it, I wear it with like a white blouse or something. So that's really unhelpful. I haven't, however, noticed that it pulls at all. But as I say, it's a bag that I'm quite careful with. The Chanel customer experience before I talk, well, actually, while I talk about the Chanel customer experience, I'm just gonna skip through some of the shoes that I have um, a lot of these shoes are really, really quite well worn and they're not in the greatest condition. But, you know, when I, <laughs> like when I buy things, I like to really, really wear them. And if I'm not doing that, then I tend to sell them. So go easy, because some of these are quite worn. But anyway, right, so when it comes to the customer service in, in Chanel, and I can't speak for the rest of the world, but I can speak for London, I, um... I've never liked it. I find them quite, um, whenever I've gone in there, and this was even before I did YouTube, okay? Whenever I've gone in Chanel, they're always, um, why am I struggling? <laughs> they're unfriendly. They're unfriendly in there. And that you, you have to like really, I feel like most of the time you've really got to beg for someone to assist you. It's really, really difficult. And I'm not suggesting that the people that work in there, their jobs are easy because I've been in there before and I've seen some really, I, I don't, I'm gonna say it, some really nightmare customers really acting like children in there about stuff. And so, and I've seen the way the salespeople are treated by some customers and they're treated very rudely. And I personally have a real big problem with that. Anyone being treated rudely, but you know that. Um, so I have, so I, I get that, but, it's the kind of place where most of the time when I go in there, you, and I've seen it with other customers, you walk in and you're stood around for a little while before anyone's like, can I help you? Or if, like, if you try and catch someone's eye to get assistance, it's really difficult to get them to actually give you the time of day. And it's just the vibe in there, whenever I go in there, it's quite sort of like a bit miserable, a bit like everyone's like, oh, I've got work today. I'm so, and for any of you who work there, who are like, you're so wrong. I'm so sorry, this is just my opinion. And this is how I felt even way before I ever did YouTube. It was always really hard work to get uh, customer service um, 
and so that's what I would say. So if you ever go into a Chanel store, particularly if you're new to the brand and you're a bit nervous, if they treat you like that, don't worry about it. It's nothing personal. <laughs> I think that's just what they're like. Dior, on the other hand, Dior are the loveliest brand. And I think that Dior, since Maria Grazia Churi's been in, I think they've done a really, really great PR job when it comes to making sure that the customer service is friendly, personable, they cannot do enough for you. If you wanna go and look at stuff and touch stuff and see what it looks like on, but if you're not into, if you're not there to buy that particular day, they're, they're okay with that. They're really like friendly about it. Um, I feel that with Dior, they've really broken the boundary when it comes to luxury and it, they've made it a lot more friendly in there. And I've been to, into Dior stores in um, Singapore, Hong Kong, Geneva, Paris, and it's weird. It's like the, it's like everyone's had, it's, it's almost like everyone's been given a textbook set of guidelines on how to behave and everyone behaves in the same vibe, the same manner. Um, and even when I went into the Geneva store actually last year, I remember thinking, oh, like, is it gonna be like Chanel where they're like, yes, what do you want? But it wasn't like that at all. I felt like I'd walked into the London store, the, the people working there were the same, even the security guards like, come in, you know. And I've had it in Dior before, in recent years since I started doing YouTube, where I've even had the Dior uh, security guards come up to me when I'm filming and I thought they were gonna be like, can you not? And they're like, do you want me to film that for you? Like, they're brilliant, they're so friendly in there. But with Chanel, I do find them not to be as friendly. So that's my kind of thoughts on it. It wouldn't stop me shopping there. I just, it's not the kind of place that I automatically feel like, oh, I'm in, I'm in Harrods, I'm gonna go and have a look in Chanel. Whereas in Dior, it's like, it's way more friendly and just quite relaxed. The next thing is the item that was 15 pounds and that's a ready to wear item. Honestly, when you see it, you're gonna be amazed, I think. This is the first thing. This was not 15 pounds. This is a uh, blazer jacket. Uh, should I try this on? Before I do try it on, I'm gonna give you a close up and get this to focus on the hanger. With Chanel items, you tend to get the hanger with it, uh, which is like velvet. And then you also get a white, it's like a white uh, suitcase. You, you know the zip up? Not a suitcase with wheels, like the zip up suitcases. And this I bought when I went to Singapore actually. And this is from, um, that, let me show you. This is from a collection last spring, summer. And it's been, it's been another one of my, probably my most worn items throughout autumn and winter because it's really warm. I was surprised when I heard it was from the spring, summer collection because it's more of a winter material. It's, it's really, really warm. Has it got pockets? No, this is it. And, um, I, I love it. I wear it an awful lot. It's really, really nice. And it's kind of, um, it kind of feels fleecy. It's a bit like the tweed bag, actually. That sort of, you know, that sort of like woven together material. Can you see what I mean? It's kind of like flocked material almost. It's like a short cropped off jacket. Um, before I try it on, let me show you close-ups. Mm. It's there for any of you who want to know it. There's the serial number. And it's kind of like a thick wool fabric. It's got like a pattern in the, um, in the lining. Excuse me, I'm going to the gym later and I'm in my gym leggings, so <laughs> please forgive me for that. This is it. And hang on. Has it got like a chain? Yeah, look, it's got a chain lining around there. And as soon as I put it on, I really liked it. I thought that is so sweet. And the shoulders are really unusual as well. But when I tried it on, I, at the time, let me put you there. At the time I was wearing, I think skinny jeans and like Stuart Weissman boots. And when I put it on with those trousers, somehow it looked really nice because this is really quite formal, but then the trousers were quite, were like quite casual. So I thought of many ways that I could wear this. Now, the reason why I got this for 15 pounds, this was originally, I think, this was originally about 
that I think was three and a half thousand pounds. Is it written on the label? Maybe it is, I don't know. This was originally three and a half thousand pounds and it was 40% off in the Christmas sale. So the way that I got it for 15 pounds was that I bought it in Harrods and I had Harrods rewards points. So Harrods have got this free um, card and whenever, you think you can pick them up at the checkouts and whenever you spend money, you get points for every pound that you spend. And then the more points you get, the further up the tiers you get. Once you get to the top tier, I think you get three points for every pound. So let's say that you spend a thousand pounds. On your card, it would go down that you'd spent three thousand. Then at the end of the year, they send you a voucher for like a percent, like whatever you've spent accumulated and you also get two hours free parking you get free coffees it's really good anyway i had 15 pounds short of the value of this in points on my card and when i went and checked out i already knew i had the points and when i went and paid for it um the lady was like you've got like this many points do you want to use it and i was like why not because they were going to expire anyway I, I kept saving them for for a rainy day or something anyway the only thing I had to pay was £15. And I thought, yeah, I really like that. So that is my Chanel collection. My kind of verdict is that the if, if you can only buy one thing, I think that uh, and one of the brooches or a pair of earrings are, I think, the best thing to buy. If you're into logos and labels and you don't want it or you can't afford a whole bag at the moment in your life, you will one day, but you want something small and you like the, the double C logo, then I think the brooches and the earrings are really nice. Um, they also start off at around about £200, I think, which I remember when I bought my first pair of Chanel earrings in 2014. I was really surprised. I think I bought a pair for like £175 and I had no clue. In my mind, I just thought they were £500 and upwards, but they're not. And I don't even care anymore when I, when I shop in there. If I have a budget, I'm just like, what have you got for this amount of money? And also, if you're nervous of talking money or asking questions, on the back of the earrings, so they come out in a tray or on the brooches, there's normally a ticket on the back and it's got like the barcode and the serial number and the price. So just be flipping them over and have a look if you want to know. Um, so yeah, that would be my thoughts on it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed this. And I will see you in the next video.